that are behind this. You have our colleges and universities, some of those with large endowments as well. So you combine this, and this is among the biggest scandals ever. It truly is shocking. Vast amount of money, a religious zeal, and a new generation of adherents, it seems the climate monarchy is on the rise. But where does this all go? What is at stake if they achieve their ends? Mark Morano looks into this issue. So this is what it all comes down to, a climate monarchy. Leaders living one way with a lavish lifestyle, while the public, let's call them the masses live a life of deprivation and limits. Politicians deciding and determining our economic and energy choices in order to prevent an alleged climate crisis. And, and none of the strategies that have been offered by the U.S. government or by the EPA or anybody else has the remotest chance of altering climate if in fact climate is controlled by CO2. The burden is always on America and on some of the more developed nations. And I'm convinced that what's really at root is a desire for other governments to impose control in a almost one world government kind of way upon America and the rest of the nations of the world. What does living in a four degrees warmer world look like? Fresh water shortages, higher greenhouse gas emissions, unprecedented fires, worldwide destruction. Join us and the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment at the World Government Summit. We are going to contribute three billion dollars to the Green Climate Fund so we can help developing nations deal with climate change. Did, did Congress approve the Green Climate Fund? Senator, as I said previously, we reviewed uh, with our lawyers the authorities we had and had made uh, provided resources in accordance with those authorities um, to meet what what right. Uh, but the fund itself, I mean, it went into an account. Did Congress approve that account that it went into? That we have the authorities that Congress provided us to make that payment. But did Congress approve it? The did Congress the account the what? Green they, Climate they've Fund? They passed an appropriations bill that we've reviewed the authorities of and have used to make this payment. And when you sit here before the American people and say that the Green Climate Fund was never approved by Congress, and yet $500 million just went to it. I don't think that lawyers can replace the Constitution. But we have to put our money where our mouths are. If powerful nations, like my own, accept constraints. In fact, we're all going to have to give up a little bit of our sovereignty in order to make the world work. Inside the policy, you need a law. You need a rule. You need the coercive power of government to say, do this. We will need governmental actions. We need to put a price on carbon. We need to put a price on carbon in markets, and we need to put a price on denial in politics. But how can they possibly get all the countries to willingly agree to give up their sovereignty? If you can identify a threat that is global, and then say, we can only respond adequately to that threat with regulations that go across national borders. Now you have a rationale for global government. It's a scam. There's, there's nothing sure. It is a scam. It's been going on now for about 40 years. Started by Morris Strong from Canada as part of the UN. It's part of the UN's agenda for 21st century global governance. And they're just trying to erode sovereignty and take control of each of the countries through their energy policies and through finance policies. The Paris for the climate is accepted. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement. Many Trump supporters, including those in his cabinet, applaud these proposals as a way to prioritize domestic interests. It's a bad deal for America. It was an America's second, third, or fourth kind of approach. Of course, not everything goes according to plan for the climate monarchy. The election of Donald Trump and his withdrawal from the Paris Accord 
hit them like a ton of bricks. President Trump isolated uh, the United States with his reckless and indefensible decision. A lot at stake, potentially, for the planet. How dare you? But the president's actions were supported by many. The Paris Accord was somewhere between a farce and a fraud. You don't even have to mention greenhouse gases in your commitment if you don't want to. You send in any piece of paper you want, we're going to staple them all together, and we're going to call that the Paris Accord. Everyone sent in a piece of paper, and they stapled it together and held it up and said, this is amazing. If everyone does what they promised, and remember, the, the track record ain't all that good, but if everyone does all they promised and do it all the way through the century, we'll reduce temperatures by the end of the century by 0 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit. You won't be able to measure it in 100 years. And yet, the costs will be somewhere between a trillion and two trillion a year. The one country that showed up in Paris with a, a very costly, ambitious target was the United States. So President Obama took all the zero commitments from everybody else, but threw in a really expensive one for us. Even the federally funded climate change play, the great immensity, ridiculed the futility of UN climate agreements. Reducing emissions with no specific commitment regarding the level of emissions or any future reduction of emissions. And in addition, a commission to watch the condition of emissions with no power of enforcement. And that all nations would begin to start to try to cut emissions as soon as possible. So what is your view of this new UN climate treaty and what impacts will it have and how, how do you view it? I am, of course, very much opposed to that as I has been in the past. For me, in some respect, it's uh, more or less nothing new. It's just the quantitative increasing of all the uh, ways how to block um, free human activity. They want to dictate it, control, regulate, mastermind from above. What about centralized transformation? What about people who might be afraid that the UN is going to essentially be a sort of climate, climate central power as opposed to... <laughs> That's your response? Now that is real humor. I think that the, the biggest threat is, the, is that this decision making is uh, not in line with uh, the democratic process. It's going to be very like the old Persian Empire, where you had the emperor and his court, and then you had what are called the satrapies, and these were all the individual nations who paid tribute to and acknowledged the authority of the emperor, and they acted as his poodles in all the different capitals. The whole global warming agenda is based on control. Control of science, control of energy, control of policy. So what it ends up meaning is that a core group call the shots and the rest just follow through like sheep. What they will do is they've already begun doing it. They've established a thousand new bureaucracies which are the sinews of this new global government and these bureaucracies will act with the savagery and arrogance and ability to preempt on the resources of the people, to order them about, eventually to put them on trial, that monarchs of old used to do. And they will have far greater powers than any monarch because the absolute control over people that a modern bureaucracy has through modern methods of record keeping and communication is terrifying. And that's what they're trying to impose on us. This is the, the way to the end of freedom. This is the way to the, to the brave new world of, of, the, of the future. Uh, the brave new world of dictatorship and totalitarianism. This then is a story of the future. It could be the story of our children if we fail to preserve their heritage of freedom. I had a Parisian man come up to me and I was complaining about how things in America are getting so strict and we're, and, you know, we're having all these rights taken away from me and I just you know, want to give up. And he grabbed me by the arm and looked me in the eyes and said, you as Americans can never give up. He said, you are the last vestige, you're the last front in protecting liberty. He said, Europe is gone, you have it ingrained in you and your personality and you must fight this to the very end because these same people will take over the world just like they've tried before. I believe our country is unique and one of the reasons it's unique there's been freedom. People can think of new things and go this way and we've got to preserve that heritage and 
We can't have a big brother telling us what to do. I was the only one who at UN summit spoke radically against the nonsense of global warming doctrine, you know. Thank you for your attention. I must say that there was an applause always. That, that, that uh, in UN, the, not just silence or not just yeah. an, an protest. Several of them come to me and say, you are absolutely right. I, 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 this is very close to my, my way of looking at it. And um, I always ask them, why don't you say that? No, 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 in my country it's not, uh, it's not possible. Well, my hope for the future uh, is that we are in a period, and I think we are, of great awakening. That people are starting to say, you know what? All those things I didn't think add up didn't add up. My hope is by dealing with the reality of political indoctrination in our school and taking the political indoctrination piece out, returning our schools to teaching basic quality classic education, we can suspend these programs. It's ridiculous to think we cannot. It's like Edmund Burke said, that evil triumphs when good men stand idly by. Of course, my hope would be that uh, this uh, insanity stops, that uh, research can get back on the tracks, that the people entering the field are people who are genuinely interested in how climate works rather than on how to blame climate on industry or its evil ways. Yeah. But if I had it all to do over again, I'd do it exactly the same way. I, I was asked that by a young student the other day, would you, would you do it again? Um, and I, I think, yes, it's the nature of me. I definitely will keep continuing my research regardless. People have got to stand up for what they believe in. At the end of time, I have to explain both, to my, be honest to myself and to my God, that I have interpreted what I have seen to the best of my ability in the most appropriate way possible. And that's the only thing I can do. The fight to maintain our freedom from those who want to use global warming to centrally plan our lives is an ongoing challenge. But no great battle has been won by sitting on the sidelines. We have the gift of freedom. Don't let it slip away. Don't let them establish a climate monarchy.